You're listening to Venture Capital Radio and all-time favorites AM650. My name is Shannon, and I'm pretty excited to have a new guest in the studio with me today. I'm going to introduce you to Gordon McCauley, the CEO of Allon Therapeutics, which is a clinical stage biotechnology company focused on bringing to market innovative central nervous system therapies. And we're going to get to a little bit more detail about what that means. But right now, Gordon, thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Well, it's always interesting to learn about these companies in the biotech sector because it can be quite complex. Um, So to have the the CEO join us and kind of drill this down a little bit um, is definitely a pleasure. I just want to point out to the people that are listening, Allon Therapeutics is a publicly traded company and it trades on the TSX under the symbol NPC. That's Norman Paul Charlie. And the website is Allon, A-L-L-O-N, therapeutics.com. And as we're discussing things, go to the website check it out because there's a lot further information on there. But Gordon, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got involved in the biotech sector. Sure. You know, I I had the the good fortune to have a a reasonable level of success uh, when I first started out in business with a couple of healthcare companies that um, created really quite attractive value for our for our shareholders and i had just left one of those and was feeling fairly good about things and ran into somebody who knew a fellow here at the time i lived in toronto and uh, that fellow wanted to create a fund to invest in uh, early stage biotechnology companies okay. and it really appealed to me because first of all because you know what we all like to uh, to make money if you're if you're in business but to make money doing something positive and doing something good and making a difference in people's yes. lives I love it. is is uh, extraordinary mm-hmm. and as i got talking with this uh, fellow who ultimately became my my partner in that fund uh, we discovered that we were both operators of businesses and when you think about venture capital one of the things that every single company ceo will tell you is that if only their VCs <laughs> understood how it actually happened on a day-to-day basis and Agreed. what it meant. Agreed, yes. So we, uh, we created that fund, and it's, it continues to, uh, to chug along fairly nicely. It's, uh, we've, we've created a couple of other funds along, along the way. And about uh, eight years ago, I guess, we, we met the scientific founder of uh, what's now Alon Therapeutics. Mm-hmm. And she had really interesting technology that had really interesting data behind it, and it showed in a whole bunch of different animal models, which is where you start, that this drug was, uh, potential drug, was working exactly the way that she thought it was and had all sorts of potential in different uh, brain diseases. So we made an investment. And the interesting thing about it is we made an investment when nobody cared. Nobody was interested in what she was doing because it wasn't uh, fashionable. It wasn't kind of the flavor of the month. Absolutely. So we did that and... and, uh, then it became time to get it ready for human trials and we had to build a management team and we had to do all this stuff and we were frustrated Mm -hmm. with the amount of time it was going to take to recruit the management and all this stuff and literally we were having a beer one night (laughs) and we kind of looked at each other and said you know what like one of us needs to dive in here and so with uh, with another colleague from uh, from that fund who's now our our cfo matthew carlisle he and i dove in on a full-time basis uh, seven plus years ago and it has been an extraordinary journey along the way because wow. what's what's been kind of fun about it right now mm-hmm. is that for a good chunk of that time we were doing something that was not in the mainstream it was in a, a novel approach and a novel pathway to treat different brain diseases and a lot of people said yeah but that's not what you're supposed to do and we kept chugging along And we kept generating data, first in more animal data and then data in humans, Mm -hmm. showing the drug worked and showing the the, the potential it had. And what's really been kind of fun for us is that the other approaches that many people have tried don't seem to work. And all of a sudden, people are looking at the approach that we're taking, and all of a sudden, it's become relatively fashionable. So we're after seven and a half years, we're enjoying being fashionable. But that's a good point. I mean, seven and a half years is really in the venture capital world. It's not that long. You know, it takes time for these things to to come about. And as you say, favorable, fashionable, the tables turn. Yeah, and I think think it's important uh, along the way to think about two things. First of all, do you have a management team? And it's it's not about me. I'm I'm just kind of the coach. It's a it's about a team of people mm-hmm. that actually do what they say they're going to do because any business is about executing. And when you look at the team that, that we have, it is a great group of people has largely been together that whole time and with notable exceptions we've pretty well done exactly what we told our shareholders we were going to do every year. Integrity. The, the other thing that's mm-hmm. important, I- the second thing is you need to think about different value creating milestones along the way. What happens along the way that actually 
um, demonstrates that what you're doing is the right thing, that you're actually uh, making progress and, and creating value for shareholders. Uh, crucial. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely and, crucial. And, and of course, what's really exciting about our business today is we're uh, coming towards the end of this year of the most substantive value creation milestone you could have, mm -hmm. which is, uh, we believe, generating data uh, with which we can ask regulators to approve this drug for, for sale. And let's get into that because, you know, in my description at the top here, I said innovative central nervous system therapies. So could you expand a little bit on <laughs> that and bring it down to, I like to call it Shannon speak, <laughs> so that we can all understand exactly what that means and why we should really want to get to know more about it. What that means is, first of all, we're devel developing drugs for different brain diseases. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's important to us that they be novel. It's important to us that they make uh, a difference in the way that the treatment happens because there are all sorts of incremental changes in the, in the drug business. We think it's important from a value creation perspective mm -hmm. to do something uh, very novel. And what our drug is doing is, uh, what it appears to be doing, is uh, slowing down or preventing neurodegeneration which is a fancy way of saying <laughs> brain disease, right? Okay. So if you look at a whole bunch of different diseases like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease right. or a whole range of different uh, smaller uh, diseases like the small niche market that we're going after, they really go back to um, the, the brain starting to fall apart. And, and as it starts to fall apart, very specific things happen, and, and our drug appears to, uh, to uh, slow or prevent that process. So you're in the process of, of testing this, is that correct? That's right. So we're, we're in uh, what we think is the final human clinical study we'll need to run. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so therefore, it's called a pivotal study. Okay. Um, we're doing it under what's called a uh, special protocol assessment with the FDA in the U.S. What that basically is is um, essentially the FDA saying... Um, the data from this trial is a, has the potential to be approvable, assuming it's it's the kind of data that we expect, okay. which is pretty important, I think, for our shareholders to know that the, the FDA has said this has the potential to be the kind of data set that uh, on which we would approve a drug. Right. And and so we are uh, fully enrolled in that study. So we're we're running the study in North America, Europe, and Australia. We have all the patients in. We've uh, we took exactly the amount of time we said we were going to take to enroll those patients. And uh, the study should be over by the end of this year, and we'll have data uh, immediately thereafter. And it's the point, to, a point at which we, uh, we get to find out if there's an opportunity to have this drug approved. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. So I just want to remind everybody that they're listening to Venture Capital Radio and All Time Favorites AM650. And I'm speaking to the CEO of Allon Therapeutics. That's allontherapeutics.com. Gordon McCauley is explaining to us the fact that Alon is in the trial stages with a, a drug that I'm going to get you to explain a little bit more about in a second. Um, but really, the FDA is just basically at the ready, based on the results from the study, to give you the go-ahead. That's a fair way to explain it? I think that's a fair way to say it. I mean, okay. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to it, and I, and, I, and I wouldn't want to presuppose the regulatory process. That's hmm. a, a, a very important thing to do, but, but that's uh, exactly where we are. Yeah, so I, and again, I just want to reinforce for people that want to learn more about what I just said, <laughs> um, which is really making reference to the FDA and the stage that the study is at, um, and what will happen moving forward, go to the website, allentherapeutics.com, and there's a lot of detail on there. Um, but let's talk, Gordon, about the actual drug mm -hmm. in question. Mm -hmm. How do you say that? Uh, the drug is called Devunatide. Um, okay. I'm and, glad I didn't try that. And, and what's interesting about it is that it was discovered by observing what the human brain does in response to disease and injury. So when the human brain is mm -hmm. trying to protect itself, mm -hmm. it creates a large protein. And what we did, uh, th that protein is called activity-dependent neuroprotective protein for those that are <laughs> taking the science class. Um, <laughs> short ADNP is the easier way to ref re refer to it. Uh, and that protein does a variety of things, including uh, brain protection. We then looked at the, that protein and said, okay, let's identify that portion of it that's just responsible for that neuroprotection. And let's turn that into a drug. So essentially what we're doing is using the, the human brain's own defense mechanisms to help repair it when it is under disease or injury. And is that drug specific to one disease? You know, what's really interesting about it, it's a great question. What's interesting about it is we think it has the potential to be applicable to a whole bunch of different diseases. Mm. Let me tell you why. If you look at the human brain and you put it under a microscope and you look at it on a, at a cell level, a neuron level, mm -hmm. 
Hopefully, if I looked inside your brain, we'd see billions, maybe trillions of neurons. <laughs> You're not a banker, so uh, <laughs> I, I'm confident that there will be a lot. Um, and, and so you have a neuron, and there's a large round part, and then there's this long, thin part that comes out of it called an axon. And running up and down the axon are these things called microtubules. Now, when you look at them under a microscope, they look like train tracks. Okay. They perform the same function as train tracks. They're a transport mechanism up and down that cell. And the train tracks are held together by little railway ties called tau. And what happens in pretty well every neurodegenerative disease, so any sort of brain degenerative disease, mm -hmm. is that, again, I'll give the science class later, but a process called tau hyperphosphorylation causes those railway ties to fall off the tracks. Okay. And when that happens, the tracks lose their stability and they start to splay apart. And when that happens, the cell ultimately dies. This is, uh, this is the best science class I've ever <laughs> there had. There you go. <laughs> it is the <laughs> fundamental underlying mechanism of neurodegeneration. What we've shown with this drug is that it gets into the human brain in therapeutic quantities. That's really important because every human brain has this thing you know, aptly named the blood-brain barrier, which protects the brain from most things from crossing, except, I always like to say, except for caffeine, nicotine, and cocaine. <laughs> other than those three things, most <laughs> other things don't cross the blood-brain barrier. We've shown that this drug does in therapeutic quantities. And what it does is it prevents those railway ties from coming off the tracks. So what it appears we have is a completely novel compound. We have all sorts of, of intellectual property. There are 15 families of 56 or 7 issued composition of matter and use patents and other 35 or 6 in process. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely novel compound working on a fundamental underlying mechanism of neurodegeneration, which is, which is obviously really exciting. Very exciting. The and question, the challenge is, <laughs> let me ask your question now. The challenge is, how do you actually get that drug approved? Because anybody who has a loved one suffering, particularly from Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. knows that for the last 10, 12 years, the pharmaceutical industry has spent billions and billions and billions of dollars and has not succeeded in getting a new drug approved mm -hmm. in Alzheimer's disease. And we thought, candidly, we thought it was dopey. Mm -hmm. that as a, as a young emerging company, we would try and solve problems that pharma had spent billions of dollars on mm -hmm. and not been, uh, not been successful. So we sat back and said, given how we know this drug works, is there a, a, a smaller, very specific disease state we can go after to demonstrate that the drug is actually doing what we say it does and ask for approval? And that's what we've done. And what's really exciting about it is it, it makes an awful lot of sense. I'm happy to go through it in great detail, but I'll, I'll spare you the speech <laughs> unless you really want it. But what's really exciting about it is that um, the trial is going exactly the way we thought it would. Um, it, 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 there's all sorts of anecdotal evidence from all sorts of people, which is not clinical trial evidence, but it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty encouraging. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a small, specific niche, it's still about a $700 million market in which there is no therapy at all. And taking that comment back to one of your earlier comments, providing the value to the shareholders. That's exactly right. I, I mean, if, if, if we're um, generating the data that we think we are, mm -hmm. we will be the only player in a market of $700 million around the world. And, it, and it's also important to note because it's, it's a small market that validates the larger one. Yes. We will be looking at, yes, that $700 million market, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm but also have validated the potential of this compound in a whole range of different diseases where the, where the numbers are exponential to that. Well, and I want to wrap it up on that note because I think that there's a lot of information that we've, we've kind of laid down here, um, and it can get quite technical. So you, I really thank you for breaking it down to the railway track mm -hmm. because that helped me a lot. Um, and I encourage everybody to go to the website not just to read up on Allen Therapeutics, but also to reach out to Investor Relations, um, contact that department and ask the questions. Get more information. This is a, a company that's moving forward. 2012 looks very good for you guys. So very it's, excited. it's definitely a time to uh, get involved. So thank you so much for using Venture Capital Radio as a platform for your message. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Look Gordon. Got a successful business that the world should know about? Share your story on the show. Go online to am650radio.com. This is It's About Business with Shannon Pearson, where business owners share their success stories. There's lots more still ahead on AM 650.